everybody has, like I've done things that would mortify so many people, and then there are other things in there that I've done that are really embarrassing to me, but other people don't think they're embarrassing. So maybe it's more of a personal, like a, it's more of like personal shames. I think that I've, I've really been able to move past a lot of them. A lot of them don't feel because you um, shouldn't. You really should feel ashamed. <laughs> well, I know there are some, like my sister-in-law's here, and she's like, I can't. It makes me kind of uncomfortable to read it. And there was one we were talking about backstage, and you were like, I had to skim that. It was too gross. <laughs> oh, dicks. Yeah, you can read this. It's nice and short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my brother Paul was a senior when I was a freshman. We hardly ever saw each other during the school day, but there were occasions when I would clock his trademark limp as he walked across the quad, right foot leading, left foot lagging. Sometimes he would do this little galloping step and start clapping his hands really fast. He had cerebral palsy, a physical disability that affected all the muscles on his left side, but he also had something else we didn't have a name for. What's it called when you memorize the TV guide? A bunch of times that year, I saw this group of popular boys, lunky jocks, not the runners, but maybe the baseball or football guys, making fun of him behind his back, imitating his walk. They'd really crack themselves up and then yell something at him, like retard or mental case. Or sometimes it was a question, what's the square root of pi, retard? He'd ignore them instead of saying, oh, it's a 1.772453850091, like he did at home. And then he, he'd get into our mom's station wagon while I went back to track practice. One day I stomped over to those jocks in my black boots with my thrift store dog tags jangling around my neck. No, I didn't. That would be the version where I'm some kind of cool girl hero. What actually happened is that I heard them yelling at him, and my ears got hot, and I never said anything to them. Not even once, that whole year. Yeah, that one still feels really shitty. <laughs> like, oh, really? You're a your disabled brother, and you just can't ever defend him? Well, nope, what's... never did. Just sit there. <laughs> Not my brother. I don't know who that guy is. Walking around looking at him. I mean, what's... at least I didn't go that step. That would be worse. What's... But yeah, there's a story in, in here called the Oklahoma Three-Way, and um, it was just from a, you know, I'm not saying I'm from Sex Positive San Francisco, and I when I said this title before, people were like, it's not, it doesn't always have to be awkward. I was like, shut up. It's just, it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing that happened to me in the Oklahoma Japan. Um, so yeah, so it's just one of the things, but it was, like I said, the main one when I just think of, I probably got 10 that are in this book that are the most like, oh God, and that's one of them. And then, um, yeah, and then I just, that's, that's And it's exactly what it sounds like. Three-way in Yokohama. <laughs> so I, I actually love this as an ending. It's called the Winnebago Master. If you're super macho about driving, then you wouldn't think twice about taking the wheel of a 30-foot Winnebago in the middle of a snowstorm and driving it over the Siskiyou Mountains across the Oregon border, even though it's a rental, and you didn't tell them you were going out of state, and you're not supposed to put chains on it, but you stop and get chains to be safe, even though they don't fit the tires that well, and then drive that motherfucker 60 miles per hour through the winding pass because you used to drive Highway 9 to Santa Cruz so you can drive anything fast. I wish everyone would wake up so they could see how amazing I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God, being like 25 years old, behind the wheel of a Winnebago with like eight sleeping people, just being like, God, I own this thing. And just, I mean, we could have all died. Well, so, well know, what's so great so about that is it really flip, it's the flip side of these small shames, these small triumphs, these tiny moments that none of us have yeah. enough of in our lives. The shames outweigh them by probably 50 to 1, but all of us have those small triumphs. I, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to pick up the book, uh, Yokohama Three-Way, and other small shames. Her shames are so specific to her, and yet, I think, so um, common among all of us. Uh, we all experience those terrible, terrible moments, and uh, what a joy to have them to have somebody else unburden herself so that we don't have to. So thank you, Beth, for writing thank this book. Thank you, Michael, so much.